Hey guys, what's up? It's Vampire Bride. I wanted to start this video off by mentioning why I wanted to mod the PlayStation Classic. I mentioned in my PlayStation Classic review that the PlayStation Classic only came with 20 games and it didn't really come with any of my favorite PlayStation titles. But by adding Bleem Sync, I can get any of the games that I want. Which leads us to our first question. Why were there so few games and not many of the most popular titles? This basically comes down to licensing issues, specifically getting licenses to use the music in certain games. Now I do want to mention that I do already own some form of these games, many in physical copy and some that have been downloaded on the PlayStation 3. That being said, the thought of all of these games being put into this tiny console sparked my interest. It is very convenient to have all of your games in one little system ready to play. And all it takes is a USB drive and a few minutes of your time. Honestly, minimal effort. The techie in me just had to try it out. It's more convenient than an emulator. You don't have to track the BIOS or configure any emulator settings. The games just work with Gleam Sync installed. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the installation of Gleam Sync. Some common questions asked about Gleam Sync and the PlayStation Classic. And a quick review of the PlayStation Classic with Gleam Sync installed. It's a lot for one video, so let's get started. Installing Gleam Sync is fairly easy. You go to modmyclassic.com, find and click the link to download. I've already done it, so I have the unzipped file already, but you will have to unzip the file by right clicking and going to unzip file. Plug your USB flash drive into your computer. You will need to label it SONY in all caps. Then move the Bleem Sync file over to the thumb drive. Now you can put the flash drive back into the PlayStation Classic. Then plug in the power, the HDMI, and of course the controller. And then power it on. You'll have the option to pick either RetroArch or Bleem Sync. Of course for the purpose of this video we are using Bleem Sync. The home page looks very similar to that of the PlayStation Classic before Bleem Sync with its rotating circle of games. These are the games that I have already added to the console. Adding the games is simple. Plug the USB power cord into the computer, then add the games from your chosen emulator straight onto the console. ETA Prime has a more detailed video and is who I watched before starting this process. I'll link that video down below. After that, when you power up the PlayStation Classic with a flash drive, in place, you'll have all your added games. Which leads me to my next commonly asked question. Why don't some USB flash drives work with the PlayStation Classic? I have a lot of thumb drives lying around for a situation such as this, but none of them were working here. I was beginning to think that this just wasn't going to work, but decided to give it one more try. I went to Walmart and basically bought the flimsiest, cheapest thumb drive that they had there. This little SanDisk 32GB USB flash drive. And figured I'd give it one more shot, and it actually worked. So why did this one work when the other ones wouldn't? Well, many flash drives draw too much power, more than the controller port is putting out. Any 3.0 USB flash drive is probably not going to work because they're going to draw more power. Also, higher gigabyte drives are less likely to work. I was lucky that the 32 gigabyte drive worked because many people are saying that you have to use even less. The PlayStation Classic controller port only puts out 5 volts at 100 MA, which is not enough to support most storage devices. However, it is enough, usually, to support peripherals, such as a keyboard or a mouse. Which led me to wonder if a mouse would actually work with the PlayStation Classic. So as expected, it's not going to let you play a game with the keyboard, but doing some research, I found out that there is actually a way to use a keyboard for a specific task with the PlayStation Classic. But that's a question for later on. I'll come back to that in a moment. How can you play two-player if one of the controller slots is taken up by the USB? Well, the simplest way is to get a USB hub, which you can get just about anywhere they sell electronics. This way you will have enough USB ports to plug in both controllers and your USB flash drive that contains Bleem Sync. 
Another way is if you have LinkSync version 1.1 installed, you are able to use OTG or on-the-go adapters. This is a bit of a process and I don't really have any desire to use it because I have what I need already, but if you're interested in doing that, I will put a link down below for a video that shows what you need to be able to do that. I recommend just getting the USB hub, it's quick, simple, and done. Do the games run at 60 frames per second? Although the system outputs at 60 hertz, the games do not play at 60 frames per second. They tend to play more at 50 frames per second or even like original PlayStation games. And many games look a bit choppy. There is a hidden hack where when you have a keyboard plugged into the second player controller slot, you are able to access different settings that allow you to adjust the settings to the game and make it play at 60 frames per second. The catch to this is that very few keyboards will actually work with the system. Only a few keyboards have been confirmed to be compatible. These include the Corsair K70 and K95. I haven't seen any Razer keyboards be confirmed only that some Corsair keyboards and some Logitech keyboards work. I can't show this as none of my keyboards are compatible, but I will leave a link to a video showing the process for if you have a compatible keyboard and want to try it out. Does BleemSync alter your console or can you revert back to how it was before you installed BleemSync? It makes changes to internal files. But if you boot up your PlayStation console without the flash drive that has BleemSync installed, your system will revert back to the normal PlayStation Classic menu. That shouldn't really be necessary as all the original games will still be there, even after the installation of BleemSync. But it's good to know that it doesn't alter the original system to where you can't go back. One last thing I wanted to mention about the PlayStation Classic is that it works with my Elgato game capture device. I thought that it was really cool that not only could I play all the games from the PlayStation with this little console, I can also record from it. That also means that if you use RetroArch or AutoBleam, which is very similar to BleemSync, has a similar download process and all, you should be able to use the PlayStation Classic to record emulators from many different consoles. I don't know that for sure as I haven't tested out RetroArch or AutoBleam yet, but it seems likely since it worked with the console and with BleemSync. To review, there are people still out there trying to mod and update stuff with the PlayStation Classic. So I'm sure there are mods and hacks that I have missed. But the initial installation of BleemSync is quite easy as long as you have a USB flash drive that will work with the console. I love having all of my favorite PlayStation 1 games in this little console. Adding Bleem Sync to it just made a good thing great. If you are the least bit tech savvy, adding Bleem Sync to your PlayStation Classic should not be an issue. That being said, I would recommend adding Bleem Sync if you have a PlayStation Classic. If you don't have one, and you like this sort of thing, I'd recommend getting one. Their price has dropped significantly since they came out, and you can get one easily for about $30, which to me is a good little investment. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that it was helpful. If you guys have a Bleem Sync or any mods on your PlayStation Classic, let me know how you like them. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. As always, hit that like button if you liked it, and subscribe for more videos to come.